So, yeah, we stopped at the point where we derived this equation. We called it the wave equation in one dimension. Still, it is in 1D, okay, one variable x. Um, I pointed out that, um, that in a tube when you oscillate a piston, such kind of waves propagate. But there is another situation which is uh, more widely available is, you know, any source of sound, if you try to observe it from a large distance, it behaves like this plane waves. It means if there is a source which is radiating sound and you are just going far away and you are measuring somewhere here, so this looks like just flat things. Okay. So, so that is why it is not very um, restricted thing which we are studying. It is very widely used equation and practically usable equation though it is just one dimensional thing. And, and this thing is called a far field um, point where you can actually assume that the, the um, wave or the, the field of uh, acoustic uh, wave is plane, a planar wave. Okay. So, we will actually define later on how, how far is far, when to say that it is a far field, when, it, when it, we can say that it is a near field, all those things we will quantify later on. But now you can just uh, know these uh, ideas that at a far distance, uh, most of the sources will behave like uh, planar sources. Okay. So, now in this segment what we will do, uh, we will just see that uh, this, uh, this constant, how it will uh, dictate the speed of the sound. And uh, for that, uh, so you know this thing that, uh, see, uh, this equation. And then we are again talking about uh, the ideal gas situation and, uh, and then it will change if the gas is not ideal and it is real and all. But we, we are talking about ideal gas condition because uh, it will not change a lot in our all the variables uh, or the values that we get. Now if you differentiate, you get always uh, this uh, differentiate and divide to get what? Uh, I think dt over t. Uh, will be equal to dp over p plus dv over v, right? That is what you get. Just take the differential, divide by the original, you will get this. Now, <coughs> if you um, keep this change in volume to be 0, then uh, you just see this, is not it? Uh, so, I will just divide this uh, into segments. So, this side is the constant volume thinking process. So, that means your dp uh, will be like p over t dt. And if you think about the other way round, uh, when pressure is constant, your dv uh, will be equal to v over t dt. Right? Now, if you think in terms of um, heat that you are gen uh, providing for this increment of temperature um, and then the related change in pressure, what you can do is say, I will do a partial. Um, del of Q with P is nothing but um, or yeah mm, so I will just dq by dp or mm, the actually only the dq I wanted to write yeah sorry uh, uh, uh. This is uh, nothing but your Q over dp times 
dp yeah so so that will give you dq over dp times p over t sorry dt right hmm. then what so d if i take this portion here so you get dq over dt to be equal to dq over dp p over t that's what the relation i wanted to get yeah and this is happening at constant volume right and same thing if you do uh, you will come to the point where you will have uh, what is this um, sorry dq over dt at constant pressure so p is constant uh, will dq over dv times v over t that's fine okay uh -huh. uh, the heat that we are providing see the reason why we are doing is uh, let me tell that uh, there are two ways to think about um, let me go back uh, to this slide here uh, in fact to this when this thing happened you know the density changed so the pressure also changed something increased so obviously uh, you will think that temperature will change pressure change density change so temperature may or may not change depending on what this volume whether it will be able to transfer that additional heat whether positive or negative to its surrounding very quickly again i'm repeating this volume so initially this was the portion and finally it became this right which was yellow it has become purple in that process uh, there it, its states have changed pressure density everything changed so obviously temperature also is a state it must have changed that's the first thought but then uh, then there are two possibilities of that temperature um, the state of temperature if just for uh, for assumption you assume that this gas is having infinite thermal conductivity then what will happen immediately that temperature will be distributed heat will be passed on to the other portions because they are in contact and temperature won't change right now why you are thinking this about this is um, we are somehow we are trying to get a relationship between dp over d rho now that uh, we can get by these kind of scenarios so newton when he thought about he was thinking that uh, uh, in this process of movement of the um, wave the 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 air um, portions they will transfer heat quickly and they will be at a particular thermal equilibrium and temperature will be constant so this dt was zero he took like this so from here that thought process was very simple so your dp over p will be just dv over v okay so that is what he was thinking so from here directly he uh, so if you calculate uh, this from here you can actually calculate uh, dp by d rho okay we will do that in a moment but then uh, we are doing this much now to see that there is another thought process or, or another scenario which can happen that 
the waves are moving so fast, things are changing so fast that air won't get time for this heat to be transferred to the nearer uh, portions of air. That is another situation which can happen. So, to now if that happens, what will be the relationship between pressure and the density? So, for that we are seeing that uh, how much heat gets transferred. So, that we are tra uh, calculating this is that heat and we will force this to 0. Okay. We are transferring, uh, we are calculating how much heat gets transferred uh, when pressure changes or volume changes because both contribution will be there for heat transfer and then we will fix or, or we will force that to 0 to, uh, uh, to simulate or to, to represent the other scenario. When we said that air is not a very conducting material, so it will not be able to conduct heat very fast and then the things are very, see if 100 hertz sound is moving, that means every, sec, every second 1000 times it gets compressed rarefied. So that 1 by 100 second, it should be able to transfer the heat. How much ever heat is getting generated or uh, reduced comes down, okay, the temperature comes down. So that transfer, is it possible? So it seems that it is not possible. So that is what uh, we call that adiabatic process, right? There is no heat transfer between uh, uh, from that control volume which we, you were thinking about. So this part, this yellow, when it became a purple, and again after in the other half cycle, it will become yellow because things are moving like this sinusoidally, suppose. So then again it will come back to its original state even if you do not think about now uh, sinusoidal every, anything. Suppose only a single sound wave passed but then everything has to come back to its original location because of stiffness. Stiffness will not keep it there, it will bring it back to original condition. So again this uh, purple will come back to yellow. Now in this whole thing, will heat get transferred? So it seems or we have now seen that it does not get time to transfer, which erroneously Newton thought that it gets transferred. So he used this expression and we are now trying to derive the other correct expression where there is no heat transfer and that is why we are mm, evaluating this. Okay. Hmm. Now if that is so, then uh, the total amount of total amount of uh, Q is nothing but you know dQ over dV times dV plus dQ dP times dP, right? So these are the two ways which are possible uh, for heat to get transferred. Now we have derived expressions for these things. Um, hmm. Okay, here what I can do is um, this thing you know them as some other symbols also, right? The yeah, this you know as specificated constant volume and constant CV and CP, right? So if this is CV and if this is CP, okay. That means now dQ, the partial of heat with respect to pressure is nothing but Cv times T over P. So like that I will just substitute here to get uh, this expression, time will be there in both. 
you get uh, say Cp uh, dv over v plus Cv uh, dp over p. Okay, so this. So just from here, I replace that. dq over dp is Cv over t by p, and dq over dv is Cp t over v. So that's what has been replaced here for this expression and this expression, and you get this. And now, as I was saying, we can enforce the condition of there is no heat transfer that make this 0. If you make that 0, now you get like this, you know. Um, so, Cp dv by v is equal to minus Cv dp by p. So, if you consider isothermal condition, you are getting this. Those constants were not sitting there, Cp and Cvs. Now, if you consider there is no heat being transferred, you get this condition. So, this is the modification which was proposed by Laplace. Okay. Now, what? Hmm. Now let's calculate. Hmm. Um, see, if you go back here hmm, to the next slide, even back. Uh, yeah. So here, um, you, can you think that uh, this is? Um, I can. In fact, there. Uh, I had summarized somewhere. I'll write it there. Here. Right. Here. Uh, sometimes how it is written is, you know, rho e over rho naught is um, minus dx and this is given, given the name delta condensation, it is the fractional change in the density, okay. So that is uh, is a term which uh, you can, because in the literature you will always find this. Um, in, in and then it will be replaced with negative of your uh, displacement gradient okay so i thought it should be um, tool and uh, in fact if you see uh, the derivation of that uh, the change in volume uh, was what mm. Uh, I will say um, is it not uh, have we ha, ha, ha. come again uh, in a way this is the change in volume right if you consider unit area so, this is the change in volume. So, that means now I will write here, where am I writing? Uh, here only. Yeah, so dv over v. So, dv over v. Now, this dv, uh, we uh, saw that uh, it is what? d xi over d x times dx. Uh -huh. uh, no, uh, that was the total full volume, the change in volume we are writing. 
so that dx was coming from 1 into dx basically right 1 was the area so this is the change in volume and dx is the volume actual volume so basically your dv by v is nothing but dz over dx so that's the point which i wanted to make so here you can replace that with you know so from here you are getting cp um, dz over dx is equal to minus of cv now this dp is the acoustic pressure right that p excess or the actual pressure of acoustic wave which we are talking about isn't it over and this p uh, will have the complete pressure uh, this has come from the equilibrium pressure right it has come from where uh, the, the the atmospheric pressure don't you think that this is the atmospheric pressure over the change in pressure right so that means this is we will say this p excess or whatever i'll say okay for now we will write p excess but later on will this remove this e because that is what our acoustic pressure always uh, whenever we will write small p you will mean that that is that excess pressure okay over atmospheric over p right hmm so that means what you are getting um, this p is cp over cv is gamma so negative is there uh, your gamma times this we call say delta uh, and so this is a capital p. i was writing p naught or something okay gamma p naught delta right so this is one thing which you should always uh, remember also but then here you can just write something like see this d p is like your small change in p and this delta is like d rho over rho so i can bring that d rho like that so will it not be like this you know um Mm -hmm. Come again. You are saying something? The delta is 0 over rho. Yeah. So, any, anything? I missed out something? Oh, oh delta is minus the zeta. Delta is minus. Okay. Oh, you want to say that this is um, plus? Oh, thanks. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, thanks. Because delta is negative of del psi beta. Yeah. So here uh, I can write that it's like gamma p naught over rho. Right? Rho naught in a way. right but this you remember what was that that constant k isn't it in our equation in fact we started this segment to uh, actually evaluate that constant sorry here only this constant this constant was nothing but the um, dp over d rho how pressure changes with density and that has come out to be gamma p over rho and if you compare the equations it was nothing but c square right so that means your c is under root of gamma p naught over rho naught
now so so uh, if you don't use this cpu over cv you can still do everything just this factor of gamma will be missing and that will come up uh, and reduce the value of c to make it 270 ठीक है हम्म, so we'll stop for this segment here.